three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. This is The Real Pineapple. This is your humble host, Hunter, here, and I am here with Colin. Colin, how are you doing, sir? Yeah, you know, we're both a little under the weather, but, uh, you know, we're grinding it out uh, for the people. That's yeah, ex- exactly. Uh, I, I, I'll be honest, guys, and I, I apologize in advance. This will actually be a shorter review because, uh, yeah, I woke up this morning. I've been up since 6, too, which I'm sure is not helping. I just... I woke up at six, so yay me. Um, and uh, yeah, haven't been feeling super hot, but uh, yeah, we are, we will grind this out real quick. And uh, speaking of a grind, uh, <laughs> we're talking about Ad Astra, which uh, which is directed by James Gray and actually written uh, as well uh, by James Gray. You know James Gray from uh, from things like uh, you know from like the Lost City of Z, which I actually really liked the Lost City of Z. I was and uh, we own the night. I was actually shocked when I saw that it was him. I was like, "Really? Um, okay." And I will say, dude, um, we're both bad. Uh, we're both big Brad Pitt fans. Uh, I, I know Snatch. Uh, Snatch is one of your. Uh, uh, it's one of your favorite things, but it's also one of your favorite Hey-o. movies. Uh, I, I know you love Snatch, and I I love that movie. And while I'm not crazy about the end of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, you can listen to a review of that. Brad Pitt, I, I he after getting married to Angel and Jolie, it was almost like he. I know that he's doing a lot, you know, for, uh, his production company. Like uh, uh, he's uh, behind a lot of the A24 uh, movies, you know, like Moonlight, 12 Years a Slave. I mean, he's he's been one of the best actors in the last 50 years. It's not even a debate. I think he, I think he's actually almost too good at acting, if that makes sense. Like, we almost undervalue him, if that makes sense. Brad Pitt. Uh, yeah, I, I, I yeah. really think we he's do. He's too good looking. He's too good looking. Uh, people don't give him credit for his acting skills. But he's, he's one of my favorites of all time. Yeah, I, I just love him as an actor. And I will say, if it's anyone else but him in this movie, I probably would have fallen asleep, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, I So we saw this last Thursday, and, and I, I'm happy we saw it together. Uh, me, you, and your lovely night, uh, your lovely, uh, your wife, uh, my Nikki. My wife. Was, uh, we all went and saw it, and we saw it in IMAX, uh, not in 3D, unfortunately. Uh, but I will say, this is one of the prettiest movies I've seen. If this was like a... <laughs> this is going to sound like such a dick comment, but I'm sticking with it. This would be like the perfect planet Earth in space movie. You know what I mean? Like, if I were to play like a cool like synth soundtrack in the background and just have the movie on mute, I would totally watch this again. As a film, though, start to finish, uh, yeah, it's pretty underwhelming. If I'm being, if I'm being real, uh, kind of your thoughts on it? Yeah, I think they spent a lot more time and energy into how the movie looked and felt, and um, it lost a lot when it came to substance and plot. Um, it's really pretty. Yeah, um, it's a cool style that they they did this movie in. It's set in the future. It's a very futuristic movie, very science fiction. Um, yet they shot it, and it looks like First Man, where it's like, wait, is this in the fifties? Like, you know, the camera work is is you know all in, on film. Uh, so it looks really cool. Um, you know, it, it's it might be worth buying the blue, the the four K just to watch it. <laughs> um, yeah, just to watch some of the scenes because there, there's really cool scenes. Um, but yeah, I was, I was just kind of bored. <laughs> yeah. I got and, bored of watching the pretty colors. And I'll be honest, man. So Tommy Lee Jones is in this movie. Uh, he plays, uh, Brad Pitt's, uh, Brad Pitt's dad. Uh, he's, uh, H. Clifford McBride. All I kept thinking whenever I saw Tommy Lee Jones is he was in a really great, uh, movie about space called Space Cowboys. I don't know if you remember that movie, but oh, I remember Space Cowboys. And course. dude, I was sitting there the whole time thinking, I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd way rather be watching Space Cowboys. 
It's like my dad loves space cowboys. Like, <laughs> like to be honest, I would. I was sitting there the whole time thinking about space yeah. cowboys and how, yeah, space cowboys is about the. It, it's basically grumpy old men in space, but it's way more. I think we own the VHS of space cowboys. Oh, no VH, VHS, VHS, yeah. bring it back. I, I think like it that. was right next to our grumpy old men VHS. <laughs> <laughs> two, well, two big hits of the uh, O'Neill household. There you go. Oh, dude, I, 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 I do like. I feel like grumpy and grumpy are old. Men, yeah, actually. we have both. Yeah, but, classics. Yeah, but you're talking to a, you know a black dude who loves Frasier, so you know what are you gonna do? But, but you're an enigma. Yeah, but uh, thanks, man. But <laughs> but really, watching this, it, it the movie asks a lot of big questions, you know, like, are we alone in the universe? Which apparently we are, we're not. And, uh, you know, like, you know, it talks about daddy issues. And I, I will say, and this, again, might sound kind of backhanded, but I thought that Brad Pitt's kind of inner dialogue, because he's the narrator for his movie as well, uh, for the movie as well. I found all his narration, uh, okay, I found a good amount of it, when we rephrase that, I found a good amount of it very interesting, but then that all, some of it also came across very, uh, not, uh, oh god, why am I blanking on the term? Uh, it came across very, like, like it didn't trust, the, like the movie almost didn't trust the audience, kind of be able to infer shit. You know what I mean? It felt very, uh, um, oh my god, why am I blanking on the term? Um, uh, exposition-y. Yeah, it was a lot of exposition. There you go, that's the term I was trying to think of. God, I'm, sorry guys, I'm a little off my game tonight, but... Yeah, I, I, I'm i happy we didn't review it last week, honestly, because I was able to kind of, you know, marinate on it and went back and watched some clips. And, you know, we watched <laughs> we watched Dora and the Lost City of Gold, what, a month ago? And I'll be honest, dude, I can remember way more about Dora <laughs> than I can about this movie. Like, and it, and honestly, that bums me out, because I remember seeing the trailer for this and going, okay, you know, wrap it in space, hell yeah. And... It's not Brad Pitt's fault, and I really kind of want to, to put that out there. And when we reviewed for, uh, First Man last year, I gave it an A minus. I remember, which uh, I know you gave it fan fantastic, but you know, even though I had some issues with it, I I was engaged for most of it. This, I was just kind of sitting there going, to, to borrow your phrase, "What are we doing here?" <laughs> like, I was like, "All right, are we going anywhere with this?" and yeah, there was, a, there was a lot of that. There was a lot of just, like, sitting around, like, what what's happening? Like, it's, you know, the, the plot is so linear, and it's just like, I need to find my dad. And then nothing else, you know, happens, except, like, he runs into a scary situation here, or he runs into, um, you know, weird um, shit going on in Jupiter here, <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, true, and, and I think for me to to kind of just get into a plot. The so Brad Pitt, he's playing uh, he's playing Roy McBride, who is very much the uh, like he's dedicated his. I don't think they say it's NASA. They, I think they just say like space program, right? I don't yeah, think it's definitely not it. NASA. Yeah, NASA's like don't put our name in. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably. I mean, yeah, I mean he he's he's probably being hired directly from like I, I think it was like World leaders you know like um they that were like hey right. we need you to go but the w- one of the interesting parts was that like they flew him out to the moon coach you know like, yeah like that was that was to see see touching on parts that i thought were cool like i liked that they were setting up this universe of like okay this is our future like we're gonna have commercial flights to the moon like you're going to fucking new york on the red eye and uh, the government needs you to go save the universe, and they're, they're going to fly you out on coach to the moon, <laughs> where there's, like, now Applebee's and this, these random chain restaurants and stores on the, like, in a big, uh, like, transit area that he flies into, like an airport. <laughs> I like that stuff. Like, that stuff was cool, but that, was, that all left me wanting like they would, they would scratch the surface with the ideas of that, and then they would like never touch on it again, and then they would leave it, and then I was just like, oh, I was kind of interested in that stuff. Colin, I just sometimes when we review, we're just so on the same page, and I, I am so happy we are because I'm sitting there thinking the same thing. I went, oh, okay, so we can just get to the moon like it's nothing, like it is, you know, just flying across country. 
are we going to touch on how that technology is developed or how we know? Oh, all right, cool. We're moving on. Like, it, it, like, and yeah, it does I was like, no, explain that. That's cool. I want to know about that. <laughs> yeah. And, and it seems like the government has like, uh, almost like privatized it to an extent because it's very much run like a business. It seems like, you know, you oh, yeah, it's like here. airlines. It's like you're yeah. flying on American. Like there's just like airlines that they're like, thank you for flying with us. We appreciate your business. Like as they're leaving. And I was like, Oh, it's like they're flying on fucking United. Yeah, sure everybody I, hates it. Like I was just like, you could do a whole movie about just like living in this future and just like dealing with having to go to the moon for business on a trip or something. Right? They're like, no, well, we're gonna bore the shit out of you while he goes and looks for his dad out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was sitting there kind of laughing too because, he, I mean, I was thinking about my whole my whole Boston trip and just how hard it was getting back from Boston back to Reno. And oh my god, could you imagine getting delayed going to the fucking moon? You'd be <laughs> You'd be so screwed. Oh, and, God, yeah. The flights would get canceled all the time to the moon. You'd be lucky if you ever made it. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a lot of, like, kind of, in like, you, you know, like, nuts and bolts stuff there that, you know, if they took an extra ten minutes and just kind of layered that up a little bit, I would have gone, yeah. oh, okay. But there's so much stuff that's just not explored. And, so, and they threw, like, they threw that in, like, they were gonna, like, you know, have some fun with it. Or they're like, hey, look, there's an Applebee's. Isn't that, like, interesting and funny? And I was like, yes, please elaborate. And he's like, nope, I'm going to fucking Mars later. And I was like, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, it, like, the, the movie was, like, it, like, had moments where it was going to be, like, this kind of more fun, like, uh, approachable movie. And they're like, no, we're going for super deep, introspective, and kind of boring. And I'll be honest to you, man. It came across very condescending, almost. Like, like... Well, it's it's like super a t- artsy, like you know, like so. I don't art even is pretentious. <laughs> so, so you know what's funny is I don't even think it's art artsy. So uh, okay, I'll give you a perfect example. I think something like Interstellar, which I wasn't crazy about. I think I gave it a B plus or an A minus. I can't remember which. I, bl- and, I, I, I bl- and I love Interstellar. I, 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 w- I, w- they they started showing it in Seattle again, like five year anniversary of it coming out. And yeah. They had it on the sixty six millimeter film, and I went and paid like twenty bucks and went and saw it again. <laughs> I love it. So I'll tell you right now, dude, uh, I almost want to give Christopher Nolan, like, a hearty handshake and say, I'm sorry that I think you're pretentious because this motherfucker, oh, my God, you want to talk about pretentious. This came across, like, this came across like a sermon, like a really preachy, I'm better than you sermon because James Gray, and he's a writer on this, so I can put this on him, the way it's all like, oh, man, this is about daddy issues. When, to be completely honest, when Roy shows up, and does end up seeing his dad again, who left him when he was a kid to go ahead and basically be Captain Kirk. Uh, when he meets him and it's like, oh, you're a monster. My kind of first thought was, well, duh. Like, <laughs> like you're in space. I don't think anyone could really keep their sanity there. Now, I will say that the whole con- the, the, the whole storyline of uh, Clifford McBride going up to space his uh, his crew losing their minds and basically trying to plan a like a mutiny and him killing all of them in theory i went oh that's really interesting and that's when i kind of realized i didn't like the movie because even that had a week or wrap up i was like oh my god the one thing i was kind of like oh that this this could make some really good drama no not really and i kept finding myself going oh that's a cool idea Oh, like, I, I know I made this reference on our last, like, our Hustlers review, but it really is, like, the whole, like, oh, back to Showgirls, yeah, on TBS, oh, like, that's how I felt, like, anytime they bring out a good idea, and I get excited and kind of amped up for it, 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 they wouldn't do anything with it, and I just found myself getting constantly disappointed over and over again, uh, which sucks for this, uh, I'm sorry, I just went off on a giant rant, please, go on, go ahead. Tell me I'm full of shit if you if, if, like please. No, I I think we're we're pretty much on a, in agreement on this one to be honest, which is which is funny cuz like when I first saw the trailer I was just like oh this is going to be another classic. You know, Colin really likes the the space sci-fi movie and Hunter's underwhelmed. Dude, but, I was sitting there thinking the exact same. I was like, "Oh god, here we go." Yeah, here we go again. Like same yeah. thing. But I was, you know, I'm like I don't know what you're going to rate it, but like I was very underwhelmed on this and um you know, if you're getting, like, like, First Man is slow, 
yeah. but it's methodical and it builds and it's also historical and so i'm like i'm becoming more and more of a history buff as i get older so like i was like super interested in in all of the little nuts and bolts of of how they were describing you know what it was like to be like an astronaut back then when you're the first one doing this um and it was like all very 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 interesting to me whereas this movie it's like it's like i also like the science fiction and the future stuff like one of my favorite movies um was uh, the new Blade Runner 2049. Love it. Yeah, which was amazing. Like that one that plot had so many twists and turns and depth and and um and it was fun and they went into the little nitty-gritties of what it was like. Like there's whole scenes dedicated to like Ryan Gosling and his life with his uh, Joy robot or android. Um, yeah. And how like you can get like the like they went into like how it was like the little details of life more intricately than this movie did like this Agreed. movie just like harped and harped and harped and he's just like you know it's all about his dad you know we get it like he had his dad abandoned him for space you know now you're trying to be an astronaut like dad and you finally get to go and see him. But, like, there's bigger shit at play here, man. Like, <laughs> like these surges are destroying the universe. Like, all you have to do is just go, like, kill your dad. Or, or he- figure out what it is. And I, I, I don't know. Like, the, the way this, the, the story plays out, you know, he, he's on Mars. He finds out that his dad, um, you know, had killed... The, the the two parents of the one of the higher ups, uh, the lady that's on Mars. Oh, who's played by? So I, I just want to shout her uh, her out, uh, Rufa Rufa Niga, because she was on uh, Agents of Shield. She was fucking awesome on there, and she's on uh, Preacher right now, which is about to end. And she's great on Preacher. She's actually been in a couple movies I really uh, really enjoy. Um, um, uh, Loving is one of the latest ones, but. I thought, dude, honestly, man, she was one of the few actors I thought had a little bit of presence to her because when she's, uh, her character is speaking to Brad Pitt, uh, Helen, by the way, you, she's delivering her lines with conviction and Donald Sutherland is in this movie for like 10 seconds (laughs) and, and Donald Donald Sutherland, he pretty much comes in frame, collects a check and then just pieces out. He's got maybe five minutes of screen time and it felt like every all like the heavy hitter actors. It felt like it was all like that, but you don't spend enough time with anyone to really uh, develop any feelings for him. Um, I want what's her name? A uh, Liv Tyler. She's in it, and uh, as Eve, who's like uh, Roy's. They don't, they never say if they're married. I don't think. I don't know. I think, she basically doesn't even have any lines. Yeah, I, well, I think mean, she's got a couple because like there's like those yeah, video messages, like, but, they're, they're like so irrelevant. Oh yeah! Oh, absolutely. Like her but, character, her character, like essentially doesn't exist. Yeah, and, and, and I and I will say that was something else that I went, oh, all right, all right, all right. Are we going to touch on their, you know, their relationship? Not really. It just is a kind of a classic, you know, '80s cop movie trope of you know, the, the job is my mistress. You know, it's very much you know that uh, that plot. But they don't really. You never feel like they gave a shit about each other because they don't develop the relationship so when it's the whole being shown in flashbacks you're just kind of going well all right like I, I know you're together with someone cool um i i'm really happy you brought the uh what do they call them the uh the not the flares um oh, the surges yeah i'm happy yeah. you brought that up because you're right dude a thousand percent there is way bigger shit at play here than just his daddy issues and i'm like dude you need to this is your job, you know, you need to get the fuck up there, kill your dad and save uh, the galaxy. Because the movie does a decent job of explaining, like, look, these are, the, you know, these are the stakes, you know, this is what could happen. These, uh, you know, these flares are knocking out fucking everything. We need to go ahead and get this shit under control. And they throw in the whole concept of, like, antimatter, which... Uh, <laughs> Which is not now, and I know you being the science, uh, the science nerd, out of the three of us, I found myself laughing because antimatter it it's talked about so passively. It's like oh antimatter, and I was like oh okay, are we gonna touch on how that? No, okay, like but and that's what just kept honestly just fucking pissing me off is that. 
there are these really big concepts, something like antimatter. Okay, how does that affect our universe? Eh, whatever. Okay, uh, we're talking about how Clifford, uh, <laughs> the big red dog, uh, <laughs> McBride, how he went to space to go ahead and basically find, um, help set up what was like the Mars station and all that and find alien life. That was his yeah, primary. Yeah, he, he was like going out to the edge of the, or the edge of the solar system so that they could have their like telescope um, scan for life on distant planets. Yeah, and then they just completely... So, first off, the fact that they were just like, oh, yeah, you know, there's no life out there. I was kind of like, all right. Like, really, movie? All right. After all the shit you're showing me, you're saying aliens is where you draw the line? Like, that that actually bothered me, if I'm being completely honest. And then, not only that, but they discredit everything he did. They're just like, oh, yeah, he discovered, like, all these amazing, like, other planets and shit. And has all these pictures and all, like, these, these years worth of data that no one's ever replicated or even come fucking close to. And they're like, oh, well, it's not aliens. Well, you know, what are you going to do? It's like, wow, asshole. So this movie, it's like it didn't know what it wanted to do or what it wanted to say. And so at the end, it just felt like a bunch of kids. You know what it felt like? It felt like when you're, like... If you're like coaching like a, a rec league team and all your kids on your team just start yelling at you at once, like it felt like it was going coming from so many different angles, and it, it was really frustrating because I didn't know what it was trying to say or what it was trying to accomplish. And it, at the end, it just comes across uh, tone deaf. Uh, if if I'm being uh, if I'm being quite frank, um, I well, do. So so the oh, ending the ending's a little um, interesting just because. Like they don't they don't just naysay it like oh like all of his efforts were for naught because there was no um, there was he didn't discover any life like that's that was his feelings like that's how like Tommy Lee Jones character like um, you know he, he he was saying like all of this was worthless um, and then Brad Pitt's counter to that was like you're missing out you're missing everything that like you you know you're you're only looking at what's not there. You're not like realizing the, how you cataloged all these planets, and they do touch on that. I th- I don't I don't think that's like enough to like really um, bring this movie to an end, where they're just like, oh no, like you know, my my dad discovered all this stuff. You know, we both got all these people killed. My dad's a murderer. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, they, like they throw all these things at the wall at the end and everything is left like very, you know, open to interpretation. They don't explain the surges at or all. like what, like how they stopped it. They're just like, oh, okay, we, we got Tommy Lee Jones. He's chill now. Like we're good. Um, so yeah, I, I thought that, I thought the ending was confusing and like very anticlimactic like he basically just finds his dad and then he's just like all right i'm gonna head home now and and and, and as we get home really easily in on in completely impossible scenario yeah so let let, the the last thing i want to bring up before we wrap up here and this really is what ding the movie to a point i was like um there's a point where and I actually, I actually found this kind of interesting. It kind of reminded me of like Assassin's Creed, where every so often you have to check in with basically uh, gr- grown up, uh, grown up Alexa, so like Alexis, I guess, um, and basically do like a psyche vow. And I thought that was actually really interesting because you know uh, Roy always has to go like I'm calm, I'm ready to complete my mission, and like things like that. And so when he finds out that his dad's a murderer, he of course you know reacts as anyone would. He fucking freaks out, and so the computer basically goes, "Hey, fuck you! You're unable to go ahead and complete your task. Go home." So he ends up sneaking onto this uh, onto this rocket, and <laughs> Colin whispers over to me at a point. He's just like, "Wait, what?" Because the rocket's about to take off. It's got, what, like 15 seconds to take off? So just the thrusters alone, the fact that he could sneak onto a rocket is absurd at best. And then there's, like, multiple levels to it, so it's like that wouldn't work. So, yeah, if you want to get into, like, the like the more nerdy aspect of it, feel free, because I know that bothered you. Yeah, it, 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 that, that part took me out of the scene just because... You know, it was supposed to be this big climax to like him leaving Mars and getting back on the the rocket so that he could continue his journey to go find his dad. 
And um, the, I guess the only way that they figured that he could be getting on the rocket undetected, like before it takes off, is if he was doing it as it was taking off. So he's like slipping through like whatever hole apparently is there into the cockpit from the bottom <laughs> of the rocket, which yeah. is how big? I have no idea, but probably really huge. Yeah, he, he does all this very quickly. All of a sudden, he's like popping into like the main cabin. The rocket is like shooting up into space. Like the amount of acceleration would be throwing you into the back of your seat. There's no way you could move. And they're all just like wandering around the cabin, like, "Hey, you're not supposed to be here. Oops, you're dead. <laughs> Killed you." And like all this chaos that's happening, and I'm just like, "How does this all work? What's going on? They're all dead now. What the hell?" <laughs> Yeah, so Roy, so... And, so, like, the and, plot's crazy at that point. Like, he's just going to be alone for the rest of this time. And then the science of it all just doesn't make any sense to me. So I was, like, I was so confused. So it was a very lazy way to go. See, he's just like his dad now. So that's another issue. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I was like, oh, fucking calm down. I get it. Like, like it, it got very sledgehammery near the end where it's like beating me over the head with what's wanting to say it's like okay you need to be more you know subtle uh, than this and the thing for me at the very end is the complete the computer he shuts off all comms because you know he's a fugitive <laughs> you know he fucking killed people and he disobeyed you know his uh uh you know knock off nasa and so he gets back to earth and so you see all these military guys like invade the sh- like the, the shuttle or his pod, whatever, as he's getting out. And so you're like, so me and Colin are like, oh, he's going to jail. No, absolutely not. No consequences at all for breaking orders, killing people, <laughs> and potentially damaging, what, millions of dollars in equipment? You're just like, what? Like, nothing. Nothing happened to him. The, the movie ends with him basically at a diner and an Eve, uh, uh, comes uh, Lily, uh, Lily Tyler's character is meeting him for coffee, and she's like, "Oh my God, you're back!" It's like, that's it. Like that's how it ended, and and I was, I found myself getting really upset. So I actually came home this past weekend, like actually uh, yesterday. I watch, I rewatched some of First Man, right? Because I was like, I'm gonna rewatch some of this for context, and oh my God, First Man, dude. Uh, Buzz Aldrin is such a dick in there, but he's hilarious, and you get to learn about so many different characters. You put a gun in my head right now, I could not tell you the name. I, I had a, I couldn't remember Brad Pitt's character's name. I was like, Ron? I just remember uh, McBride. Like, that, yeah, that's all I remember. Uh, cause, like, son McBride and, and dad McBride. Yeah, and dude, that's a shame, man. Because I get that this movie wanted to really be you know, like, really want to be epic and really want to make you think, and all it just made me think is you guys needed another 20 minutes to to flush this shit out, and at, at least, honestly, and while First Man I did think was a little was a little long at points, First Man, at least, the visuals the whole time for me I thought were amazing. Uh, there's, a, there's a moon chase scene on here, and I'm gonna be honest, dude. I was I was amazed at how boring that came across to me. I was like, this is like a bad Star Fox level, to be completely frank. Oh, and it's, that's a little harsh. I, I like that I, scene. I thought that was really good. Yeah, I do. I couldn't get into it, and I think that's when I went. Oh well, man, the thing I, I like think about that this. scene was they actually did that really well. Like they they did like I th- I thought this movie was headed in a good direction because they did a cool thing with that scene where they made it like. You know, if there was this crazy chase scene happening on Mars, like, there's no atmosphere, so there wouldn't be any sound, or it would be very, very quiet at the minimum. And the fact that, like, it was all, like, deathly quiet, I found really cool. Um, that, that was definitely, like, one of the nerdy parts that I was like, good job, movie. Yeah, I mean, I will say I did like the very subtle use of score here, and visually... Some of the stuff really is incredible. Uh, I will say, too, the opening scene for this movie, I definitely was feeling, feeling like a little vertigo, but in the best way. But, it, and I'm going to co- compare this to First Man again. First Man has one of my favorite opening scenes in the last couple years. I, I fucking love that opening scene. And while this scene was great, it wasn't the scene from First Man. And I really just kept comparing it to First Man and how uh, 
more engaged I was with that from start to finish. Um, get, getting my final thoughts here, man. Uh, I, I'm really kind of struggling on where to put this because visually it is pretty. The, the budget on it was only like 80 mil, which I was surprised at, to be completely honest. But it looks pretty for, you know, for what it is. But at the same time, for some of the, for some of the shit that I just... That I was sitting through just thinking, man, can this just can this go faster? Can you guys give me something? Uh, I, uh, I gotta be honest with you, I gotta give this a C minus, man. Like, as visually pretty as it is, if someone were like, hey, should I go see this in theaters? Like, I, I'd say yes, but if people have nice big TVs at home, like you can you can wait on this. Save your money. Um yeah, so C C minus for me, man, and I did not come into the review thinking I was gonna give it that low, but it's the more I'm talking about it, man. Yeah. Uh yeah, C minus for me. Uh sir, your final thoughts and grades, sir. Yeah, so um you you definitely disliked it more than I did. Um like I, I, I thought we like at one point we would start talking about the like some of the, the action scenes and I was gonna I was gonna talk about the, the um the chase scene on Mars, the opening scene, I thought was like phenomenal. Um, I thought it was as good as, as anything in First Man for sure. Um, like the fact that they direct, the, hearing the budget's only eighty million is actually very impressive. Um, I agree. So I, I I think we spent most of this um, review bashing it pretty good. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put some silver linings in there. I think people some people will really find this like you know they'll they'll like it a lot. If if you like a slow burn and like you know, this um, kind of, like, voiceover with Brad Pitt, the inner, you know, monologue going the whole time. It's very, like, introverted, very introspective. Um, you know, you may be down for that. I think it has spectacular visuals. I think the directing, as far as the cinematography goes, the cinematographer was the same guy that did Interstellar. That's why... Oh, so was it? That looks, makes yeah, sense. <laughs> so, so much of this looks so, so pretty. Um, I think it's definitely going to win some, or at least be nominated for some awards in um, cinematography and um, probably some video editing, stuff like that. Um, so I think there's a lot of things about this movie that really drag it upwards in rating for me. Um, I was more just, you know, I was just zoned out, kind of bored. Um, I thought the plot was really weak. Um, you know, I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to put this, like, very relatable you know, father issue story, um, on a grand stage. Um, but I think it missed the mark, um, on being very entertaining, um, to me personally, but I would definitely rewatch, um, parts of this movie just, um, for the, the, uh, cinematography that, and, and some of the directed, um, sci-fi action scenes I really liked. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to give this a B minus. So I don't normally do this, but I will be the first to admit I, I that I came, I came at this a little hot. So let me back it up a little bit. So I, I will say I, I, the the opening scene was good. I just didn't think it was as good as First Man. But when he's falling, it really is like an incredible like holy crap. Um, some so much of the character stuff does not work for me. But I don't want to disrespect the people who you know did the sound editing like the the, the score. I, I would compare it to gravity because it's used very sparingly, but when it hits, I think it does work well. Um, like I said, I saw some IMAX with with uh, with uh, Colin here. I I can't justify someone paying full price for this. I, I just can't. Like in my head, I'm like, no. Yeah, I don't, like, I, don't, I don't know if you need to do that. But at the same time, if you saw this at like a five, like if I saw this at Cinemark on like a five dollar movie Tuesday, yeah. I'd probably be like, all right. That I, was th like I think you should definitely see it on the big screen. I th I think you're you're like if you just watch this for the first time, like on on your TV, like you're it's definitely you're not gonna like it as much as if you go in, you hear the big booming sound, and you see everything on the big screen. I think would definitely help your enjoyment of the movie for sure. Yeah, so I'm gonna change my rating, and I'm just <sighs> B minus. I, I I can't go there. I'm gonna give it a C plus because I I think you see this at an early like if you I think if you see this on a discount day at your local theater, you see it on a big screen. I think 
I think you'll at least appreciate the visuals. Honestly, get really high before you see this. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's why, I mean, I, I really enjoyed the visuals because, I mean, I'm not saying I was super high, but I'm not saying <laughs> that I wasn't super high. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wasn't, but I, I, I definitely wish I was. So, I mean, you know, maybe that's what you need. But uh, to say that this, was, this wasn't this was disappointment, it, it really was for me. Because I remember seeing the trailer, like, a couple months ago, it being really amped for it. I'm like, okay. Well, like, they kept they kept throwing Interstellar around too, which like I know you're not the biggest fan of, but it's still I mean it's still very high regarded. Um, you know, Christopher Nolan sci-fi and the obviously the cinematography with it all being done on film was crazy. So like to throw that around in the previews, like you're gonna have high expectations of people coming in. So like you better deliver, and this one fell short for me. Yeah, so it it's it's just it's it's a bummer, but uh, you know, hey, Brad Pitt will probably get an Oscar nomination for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, so he'll 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 be fine. Uh, yeah, but I, you know what, Brad Brad Pitt was definitely not a part that I disliked, but he you definitely know how charismatic and and great he can be, and uh, it just seems like James Gray kept going like, no, stop, stop being charismatic. Be moodier. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I agree. So, what are you gonna do? But, uh, guys, have you seen Ad Astra? Let us know what you thought in the comments below. Uh, you can go ahead and like us on Facebook at the Real Pineapple. You can go ahead and follow yours truly on the Twitter at J Hunter Real Pineapple. You can follow Scott on Twitter at Nearman the First, and you can go ahead and follow Colin on Twitter at the Real O'Neill. And guys, uh, we're coming up on Halloween to quote Raymond Holt. Uh, yeah, so, guys, check out our uh, check out our sponsor at Stat Guy Studio. That's S T A D T G E I S T Studio on Instagram at StatGuys.Studio. Use that code Real P twenty nineteen for ten percent off your order. What you know about it? And you can go ahead and follow us on SoundCloud. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Podbean, and Spotify at The Real Pineapple. Uh, guys, thank you so much for listening. Uh, we'll have a, a technical difficulty should be done, which is why I didn't do this this weekend, but I'll have a belated Batman Day review of Batman Mask of the Phantasm up this weekend, which I'm excited for. And I'm going to go see Rambo Last Blood because I have nothing to do on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> so, so why not? So I'm gonna go. So I'll have a review up for uh, Rambo: uh, Last Blood as well, um, guys. Week of the a uh, week of the seventh of October. I've been getting some questions on it. We will have a little bit of a, a Halloween themed um, Halloween themed uh, reviews coming up. So we'll have a review up at least for uh, uh, Hocus Pocus, <laughs> uh, Sleepy Hollow. And uh, the house of a clock in its walls. Uh, and along boo some... and boo too. I absolutely <laughs> not. I will not. Oh God! <laughs> why? Why are you trying to make me sad? <laughs> should we do a? Should we do a mini um, top five favorite scary movies or Halloween movies? I I'd be down to talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe just an idea. Yeah, no, no, dude, throw, throw it out there. Uh, I so I will say, hunters don't do scary movies very often, but uh, yeah, but, but it could be Halloween movies. Like it could be, fuck, I don't even know what Halloween movies are. Nightmare, <laughs> Nightmare Before Christmas. There you go. Yeah, one. boom. Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and talk some uh, some Halloween movies here uh, in the next uh, couple weeks. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, we that so we, there's nothing new coming out this week. There's like not uh, uh, uh sorry abdom uh, abdominable which uh, uh which is like the new I think it's DreamWorks movie like the anime one yeah yeah so it, it's the same people that did uh, How to Train Your Dragon right yeah so I'll be honest I'll probably go see it sorry yeah too, this, I, the the animation looked really good it was definitely Dreams DreamWorks. Yeah, so so I'll yeah so I'll review that. So I'll probably I'll review probably Rambo yeah. and uh, Abdominable, but probably that's really like the cute. yeah. So that's like the <laughs> one. That's like the one new release coming out, and of course I'll be the the creepy <laughs> the creepy guy around all these children. <laughs> See, that's probably fucking self. But <laughs> dude, I've done it so many times at this point. I don't even think about it. But. Um, I, I, I did just, oh and dude why am I even blank how am I blank on this uh, I got my tickets already seeing it uh, the sixth 
that weekend it comes out. So we will have a review up that weekend for Joker. Nice. Uh, so I'm just going to touch on this real quick because uh, I, I don't know if you heard, but basically there is a there's a uh, letter written from some of the uh, the uh, the people who were affected by the uh, Aurora shooting uh, uh, years back. Yeah, I saw who, they're not showing the movie, right? So not showing it at that theater. Um, I mean, they're showing it in Aurora, but they're not showing it in that theater. And so do, so Warner Brothers responded, right? And I, and I, I don't want to take a lot, a lot of time on this, but I feel like I, I, but I want to bring it up. So Warner Brothers put out the statement. They said, make no mistake, neither the fictional character Joker nor the film is an endorsement of real world violence of any kind. It's not the intention of the film, the filmmakers, or the studio to hold this character up as a hero. Gun violence in our society is a critical issue. It will extend our deepest sympathy to all the victims and families uh, impacted by these tragedies. Our company has a long history of donating to victims of violence, including Aurora, and in recent weeks, our parent company joined other business leaders to call on policymakers to enact bipartisan legislation to address this epidemic. At the same time, Warner Brothers believes that one of the functions of storytelling is to provoke difficult conversations around complex issues. So, I'm not gonna go off on a whole thing about this, and I, I'm just gonna leave it here. Um, if they don't want to show that the uh, that uh, Joker in that theater, I'll be honest, dude. I, I'm I'm not even remotely upset about that. It's like okay, that's I think that's completely fair. Um, this statement by Warner Brothers, again, I'm not gonna go off on the whole thing, but I'll be honest, dude. It it came across kind of tone deaf to me. To to to, to be completely frank. Uh. Kind of, I know it's the first time you heard that. So, kind of, what were your thoughts, like, just as I was reading that? Uh, sorry, guys, for the dead air. Uh, I uh, not uh, not sure what's going on, but with the with the uh, with that statement, though, it doesn't come across. I think it comes across don't tone deaf for Warner Brothers. It's really a bummer because I I would expect a little better from Warner Brothers now. I'm excited for the movie. I'll be seeing it. We'll be reviewing it. But at the same time, though, this was one of those times that I really think Warner Brothers should have just been quiet and not said anything, to, to, to be completely honest. So that's how it came across to me. But I would love to get people's thoughts on, uh, on this. So, uh, guys, thank you so much for listening, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.